Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Awaken Your Relationships. Why? Because, you know, I am the money chick and we either work things out and we act it out through our money, through our relationships or through our health. We as human beings, that's what we do. So today we're going to talk about how your past is just not real. It's just your past <laughs> and it's not reality. So you just got to go, Oh, why keep, we, we hook to these stories and the stories just need to be in the dust. Just like I remember when you go to a Catholic funeral, it's always like, and dust and dust, we shall return. It's like, that's our past. It's the dust. It's and put it behind us, you know? Right. Right. Well, I was, I was, I do a, a morning walk now, which is, is nice because it's something that makes me feel good first thing in the morning. And I live in the country. Mm -hmm. So my walk, you know, I get to look at baby goats and I get to oh, watch the yeah. wild turkeys in the, in the cornfields. And, you know, it's, it's a nice way to start the day and it helps me process through, you know, anything that's coming up and I'm more sensitive and emotional in the mornings. Right. And so in the mornings, it gives me a chance to be really pissed off at the things that I haven't looked at or scared or frustrated or worried. And so I do this walk and I let my feelings come up. And you'll, when you do that, you start to realize that any story you tell yourself about how you feel is just a lie that you're telling yourself. Yeah, you're hooking into what was as opposed to what is. You yeah. know, Eckhart Tolle has that book, The Power of Now. And, you know, I probably read that 15 years ago. And, um, you know, you don't really realize when you're first introduced to the concept, what that really means. And we don't realize how these stories do keep us trapped, do keep us like in this place, like you keep reliving it. And it's like, <clears throat> even through everything that I've gone through in me transitioning my personal relationship, um, if I kept hooking to everything that occurred, everything that happened, you can't actually move into the future that you desire if you keep hooking to everything that's back over here in your past. It's no different than with money. Like if you keep recreating debt patterns in your past, those are all your past financial decisions. If you keep creating more debt, you keep staying in the suffering cycle and you keep staying in it and our relationships are no different. Exactly. You know, the only person who really suffers when we don't let go of the past is us. Yes. Because our body keeps reacting, you know, and the reactions are going to get higher and higher. Right. If you don't let things go. It gets worse and worse until you do, until you decide that you're no longer willing to live in that victim yep. liking sort of back and forth. You know, I'm either yep. the conqueror or I'm the conquered. And it's it's exactly. like you have to take yourself to another, another culture, another world to say, oh, so this isn't how everybody works. <laughs> right. And you kind of go, oh, it's disrupting your patterning. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Not everybody lives in the past like we do in the States. You know, that's a lot, true. A lot of people in indigenous cultures, they are very present, even if they live in the, in the mountains in the middle of nowhere their connection to reality, you know, is so deep and they don't, because they know every moment is literally, you're in a different part of the universe, mm -hmm. physically, literally. So nothing is ever the same moment to moment. Right. And try to hold on to what happened a second ago and apply it to today. You're going to suffer. Mm -hmm. You're going to be uncomfortable and unhappy and your body's going to get sick and people are going to hate you because you'll keep yelling at them. Right. You know, and so you let go and suddenly life gets better. It's not that you don't have the right to let go. <laughs> it's just that who wants to, who wants to carry around that toxic waste of the right. past right. instead of focusing on what went well in the past, dispose mm -hmm. of the things that don't make you feel good. You know, right. just let them go and nourish yourself, spiritually nourish yourself with love. Right. Yep. Yeah. And you do have to do that because um, 
it's fascinating to me how when we can actually get to that place of nourishing ourselves, how, you know, like I had stuff come up in the last three days and I did all the things that I coach people do. Like I made sure I took a walk out in nature in the mornings and I made sure that I did my meditations. Like you have these tools that you can pull from that can pull you then into the present moment. And, and it was, and even as little things is like, why do we feel like when, when our phones ring, we have to answer them? Mm -hmm. Why do we feel like we have to respond to everything that's then left in a voicemail? Mm -hmm. Like we don't like well, if you narcissists have a lot to teach us because uh -huh, they put sure. themselves first at all times. Mm -hmm. And so we have gone the opposite and just as dysfunctional direction of putting ourselves last all the time. Yep. And we have to start recognizing our mental and emotional health is mo is the most important thing in the world to us. And we have to decide we're going to do what's best for us. And that's the only way to get ahead. It's the only way. And to those of us who are people pleasers and givers, that feels so foreign in our physical bodies. You right. Know? Because it means you're not a good person if you don't put everybody else first. <laughs> right. You know, and you have to break out of that belief that putting everybody else first is the right thing to do. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not. Because if right. we constantly take care of other people or clean up their messes, you know, then they don't build the muscle themselves. Now you do it with kids because they're growing, but you always keep them on that edge of building that muscle of taking care of themselves. So sometimes the best thing to do is to be selfish and self-absorbed and do what you want and let other people build that muscle. Right. And take away the judgmentalism again, you know, uh, well, because it's about, you know, I was doing um, some energy work this morning and one of the places that it went to was um, a place inside of me where I have really deep compassion. And when you're in that place where you can, you know, again, I'll talk about this, that, you know, I remember 20 years ago, Deepak Chopra saying to me, you just have to get in the state of the observer. And I would be like, what are you talking about? And I now know that that's the place of going, oh, when you watch somebody doing their thing where their nervous system is hijacked, right? And that whether it's your kids, your ex, your employees, your coworkers, whoever, right? Your parents, your siblings, like if you can, it's about creating space in your own nervous system so that you can then observe that. And so then you don't have to participate in it. When there's an even there's an even higher level where you don't only observe it, but you look at it from a, a place of how can I help this person evolve into that higher version of themselves. And I remember you saying to me, this has had to be a year ago, Jewel, the best way you can love that person is to just hold extremely strong boundaries and do the most self-loving thing for you that that actually is the best thing you can do for them as opposed to giving into their demands or giving into whatever the scream of the moment was right because they're going to you know they're going to be in a in a different place in the universe in five seconds and the energy will have changed in them mm -hmm. and when the energy goes down then now suddenly they don't have a problem but it right. had nothing to do with you. It had nothing to do with whether you complied or didn't comply. Right. Only had to do with, well, the energy is different now. Now, where are they? Now, how do you want to handle them or, or engage with them? Yep, exactly. And it comes from a different place. It doesn't come from a place of you being hijacked. Right. And, and, and you in your own patterning. See, this is what I really want to drive home. Like, so many people still to this day are not understanding that your outside world mirrors what is actually going on inside of you. So if you shift, the outside shifts. You know, I'd like to propose something that um, people don't look at a lot. When we're scared or anxious or frustrated, 
we literally can't absorb any new information. So hmm. if you want to be a compassionate person, you cannot be compassionate if you're reacting to things. If That's you're true. Anxious, frustrated, depressed, overwhelmed, shut down. You cannot be the person that you want to be. Right. You've got to get yourself into a safe place emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. You have to get into a safe place. And only then can you have the compassion and understanding about how you create your world. Yep. But you ha we have to get out of the fear and the way we get out of the fear is by standing for ourselves. <clears throat> it's true. Yeah, that's the only way out. Like you have, the only way out is through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you have to feel the feelings, you know, and I was talking to you before we started about how, you know, here I've done so much work. And then this week I actually sold my wedding bands and my diamond and everything. And I've been divorced for years. And it was interesting. I thought I did all my work around it. And the minute the guy like gave me the check on it, I had this sadness that just came up and I just literally started crying right there at the jeweler. And I was like, wow, I thought that was all gone. But I've learned that it was funny at first. I then I watched myself go to my head and then it was like, no, feel the feelings. Cause I've learned that if you stuff them down, they just come out a different way and that's right. never healthy. Right. And so it's, it's very good to then feel the feelings so that you actually move on. And so right then and there, as goofy as it was sitting in the jeweler, you know, I'm pulling out a Kleenex blowing my nose and it was like, okay, I'm sure they've seen it before too. Because also, there's no doubt. You, know, you aren't the first one who had emotional attachment to a, a, an object. I mean, there's right. a lot of emotional attachment to wedding rings. Yep. You no. Know? And until you make the physical move, you don't even know what it's, what, what it's making you feel, what, how it's controlling you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't realize it. I realized that first when, um, I went to this, uh, meditation retreat, God, this had to be 2014, 2015, something like that. And, um, the first thing that they said, it was over a five day window. And the first thing the instructor said was, um, everybody take off your wedding rings. This is about you. It's not about your relationships. Take it all off. There's a heaviness Brilliant. energy around that because you carry things for other people. Brilliant. And that this meditation retreat was about you. And so we don't realize how, our, you know, when we're hanging out to these things in our past. And it was interesting, like three weeks before I sold the rings, I actually took the wedding album out of the corner of my closet and the top shelf it was in the corner. And I said to my kids, I go, these are yours. You know, I learned from a client of mine. I said, what did you ever do with your wedding album? He goes, you know what? I walked into my son's room and I said, this is how you came into being. And this is yours now. So I'm just going to put it here in the shelf in your closet. And you get to do whatever it is that you'd like with this, because this is your mom and dad. And I thought that was beautiful. And it was really interesting to watch my children as I did that process just a month ago here in my house, where they were fascinated by it. Because it's not what they knew it's not what they understood and but it was again it was another like almost a ceremonial letting go of the past it was like i'm passing the torch and and we you know i actually then went through my closets because i teach on the money side that our emotions are all stuffed in the stuff we have like we spend so much money and have credit card debt in this country because we're processing our emotions financially. And that's why we have the debt levels that we have in this country. And I always tell people, okay, maybe you're not ready to address the debt, but I'm sure you have a bunch of crap in your closets that you need to get rid of. Cause that's the first step in clearing out of that past to let it go. Cause it doesn't define you anymore. And I had thought, I knew I went through my closet and I got rid of dresses that reminded me of events that I had gone through. But then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I've got more of that stuff. Like I really loved this one pair of shoes. I'm a shoe girl, right? But then I remembered going, oh, that's tied to that trip that we were on in Los Angeles. And I'm like, yeah, no. There is an extra layer of letting it go because we have the physical stuff, you know, <clears throat> from shoes to jewelry to whatever that represents all that stuff. And it's more about choosing what you want in your life than it is about forcing yourself to let go of things. All you need Correct. to let go of is the emotional attachment. 
Once the right. emotional attachment is gone, once you've done a ceremony or a ritual or regulated yourself or journaled about it, then you can make a decision about whether you want to keep something or not. Right. It's about living an intentional life. Mm -hmm. It's not about only clearing things out, but we do need to clear things out. But I don't know if people know how, I don't know if people know how to intentionally get rid of stuff. Hmm. Because that's why I always start on the money side, on the physical stuff, because that's super easy for people. It's like, okay, I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to toss it, you know, or give it to somebody else that can, like, that seems to be a very easy detachment of emotions for people. Right. You just push it away. It's surface level. Something else triggers it. What, what you're doing is, is continuing the, the cycle of obsession versus deciding for yourself, I'm going to keep this, I'm going to get rid of that. It's now, I've had different experience with people on that. So what I typically find is that when people are clearing the clutter out of their closets, because that's the easiest way for them to do it, mm -hmm. what always happens, always, is they get a cold or some kind of sickness mm -hmm. because they've shifted it on the outside. Now the cellular structure in the inside that resonated emotionally with all that stuff they now get rid of it through like getting a cold or something like that. Like it actually literally helps to release some of that crystallization of those emotions that's happened inside their body. Oh yeah. Because when you stop, when you get rid of some of the triggers, you know, in, until we feel safe, we can't process through things. And mm -hmm. as long as we have something that's triggering us, we are physically not safe mm -hmm. because we're being triggered. Right. When you make the conscious decision to let something go, you have now taken a stand for yourself and you feel safe. Right. Feel safe. Now your body opens up, your blood vessels open up, circulation right. happens, and everything you've been holding on to on a physical level, all of the toxins, mercury, things that give you asthma or allergies, all the things your body's holding on to now dumps into your system. Right processed out through your kidneys or your liver or out through your skin or by crying or your breath, you know? And so we get that cold because it's our body try coming to a new set point of health right. Right. that isn't so contracted and tight all the time. Instead, one that's more open and free flowing and adaptable and malleable to life. Right. Because we're not carrying all these chains that are weighing you down and keeping you small, instead you're letting them go with thoughtfulness mm -hmm. and opening yourself up to abundance. Right. So true. And abundance is not necessarily money. That's the other thing, you know, it can absolutely include money, but abundance is like happiness in all areas of your life, whether it's your family life, your personal life, your financial life, work life. So abundance can have a different definition across the board. But a lot of people don't think that they can have abundance in their relationships. They want to have abundance, but they don't know how to actually have it. Because it's, we're coming from our trauma places. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And as long as we hold on to things we'd rather forget, then it's we're, our body's carrying it around, keeping us sick and small and not. Well, and that's a really great point, right? So, I mean, if you think about it, um, <clears throat> so I am a perfectionist and Julie always wanted, I wanted everything together, right? And so the one area of my life where it didn't turn out together was in my relationship. And so I, I still think back of conversations that were had, like we were first going through our divorce process of conversations I had with like my kid's therapist in the divorce process. And I can now see in thinking about those conversations that I was still trying to cover up because I kept saying like, well, this is happening, but you know, we're all doing our best. Like I was still trying to be like Pollyannish, like, and not really actually letting reality just be reality and accept that reality because acceptance is a huge part of the letting go process that, you know, it, it's funny to see myself five years later. It's like, and I'm a pretty open person and I'm a pretty, you know, direct person. And it's fascinating to me on how it still can creep up in there of where, 
that that lack of acceptance or willing to have that stuff come to the surface and going it it's just the reality and, and that's what in this last week that's where like me selling the wedding rings and then cleaning up some of the debt that I took on from the marriage just to get the divorce over. Um, I didn't split it. I just took it all on and I was still trying to make it all work. And cause I just wanted it over. And it was really interesting to me how in that process, um, I realized that I was holding on to the debt or holding on to the rings because of my lack of acceptance that it was over. And it's like, wow, even though I definitely want it out, you know, and it's just fascinating to me how our subconscious mind can really screw with us in these little things that are right under the surface, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why we pay attention to whenever we get irritated, like if somebody's driving too close to us on the road or mm -hmm. if somebody's uh, service is slow, you know, when we're getting a coffee or something. You know, mm -hmm. if you pay attention to those little triggers, you're able to pull on that thread and resolve a lot of things which make you stress, which upset your stomach or give you a shoulder ache or make you limp because your knee hurts or, you know, gives you back problems. So just by noticing if you're having a reaction to something and pausing, calming yourself down, getting back to a, a, a good state you get those insights and understandings about what's been happening. You don't usually right. get it beforehand. You wouldn't have gotten this insight until you gave away your rings. Correct. Right. If you, That's just, true. if you had just closed the door, put it in a jewelry box, gave them away to somebody, I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm not going to think about it. I would have never felt the feelings. Yeah, exactly. Because you would have still had an attachment to it. It's not about the physical attachment as much as it's about the energetic attachment. Well, and can I say another piece there? So the other part in that process, you know, we always talk about self-love and self-care. So I was very intentional that I was going to do with those, the proceeds from it, what was most self-loving and self-caring for me right now, because that's what I need to do to keep creating the future that I desire. And it's things like, I want to make sure I provide for my kids college funds. Like I'm very intentional, right? Like I want that stuff to go to the things that are important to me, as opposed to it, you know, going in my checking account and then it dwindles away month after month because I just, you know, went to King Spa one too many times, you know, <laughs> you or Nordstrom one or too many times. Yeah, you were in the coping mechanism instead Correct. of being intentional. And that's why you can't just give things away because the energetic attachment's still there. And that's why you don't have to give everything away. Because if there's something that you want to be reminded of, but you want to dial down the noise on it or come up with a different association, you can do ritual, you can do cord cutting around it. And maybe you could have kept your favorite pair of shoes. You know? Yeah, but they're not so much my favorite anymore. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. They were my favorite for a long time, but now I'm like, I had bought another pair of shoes the other day and I'm like, oh, these make me giggle. Like I haven't worn those other ones in a long time Perfect. because, you know, I, I realized that the favorite part of that is not so much there anymore. And that's, you know? and that's the intentional part. Right. Because we'll also get things from other people, which will be soiled with emotion, mm -hmm. you know, which may come from circumstances. Right. And we can cleanse them, mm -hmm. you know, because it's about the energy, energy. around it, the negative yeah. energy and negative associations. And so we don't have to get rid of everything we don't like. Instead, we can give it a new meaning, a new understanding for ourselves. And so we don't have to get rid of everything. Well, and I always talk about that that's kind of like a bridge because I've watched people do like where they just create like a meteor in their life and they're like, I'm not taking any of it. I'm just leaving. I'm walking. I'm not taking any of it. And I'm up. And, um, but they still have to do their work, right? right. The, the attachments have haven't gone away just because you don't see it. Just because so you just made your life a little bit harder by not creating a bridge for yourself to get to that intentional life that you want to create. Right, right. It's That's just more 
Yeah, it, and it's just more suffering and then it adds on and then you get married again and then that, that adds that weight and then your kids get married and then that adds that weight. And <laughs> it's, it's the thread that goes through past generations too. So right. many times beliefs we carry weren't ours. They were something that somebody else needed in order to survive the moment, but we don't live there anymore. Women are oppressed in many parts of our world. You and I do not have to be oppressed. Our right. oppression is by choice. Yeah. And so, you know, we get to realize we are not that person that needs to do so these true. things to survive. We have resources. We're not four or 12 or 22. Right. You know, and, it, and that's what we mean by the past doesn't matter anymore. The past isn't real because the past is it not existing now. It uh -huh. doesn't exist unless you choose to pull it into your present moment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so every story we tell ourselves about what somebody else is doing or not doing is a lie we're telling to ourselves. Right. So when I notice in my morning walks, you know, the resentments or uncomfortable things or whatever that comes up while I'm walking, as soon as I notice it, I switch over to lately I've been doing the Lord's Prayer because you can't get into trouble with the Lord's prayer. It's written in a way that, you know, you're manifesting. It's yep. like, okay, I'm tapping into the manifestation universe. Okay. Yep. This is what I want. Okay. Thank you very much for it. You know, the Lord's prayer is written well, and I don't have to, you know, worry that I'm saying something wrong. So whenever I notice that I'm going off path, I just start reciting the Lord's prayer in my head again because it's the hail mary <laughs> yes, exactly when i was a kid it was amazing grace i would stand in my driveway waiting for the bus and i would sing amazing grace to myself over and over and over in order to give me that positive message that would move me forward and it always comes mm -hmm. it always comes and you can use hindu prayers you can use something that's true, you know, that you can, whatever, but choose something that's life affirming instead of something that's life destructive, you know, life diminishing. Life giving, not life depleting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then whatever that is, like it doesn't have to, some people relate that to religion stuff and it's not, it absolutely is not. Like there's all kinds of different ways. You know, I always say that, a prayer is the way that you talk to God or the universe, whatever your belief system is. And then meditation is listening. And so it's like, you need the full loop. It's like when I go into meditation, and sometimes it's even just a meditation walk, the hits that I get and the clarity I get to do the next right step in the present moment, they're huge. But then that's where I would caution so many people, like don't plug back into your life that you had a year and a half ago. Don't just jump right back into that, you know? Take, take the intention of exactly what you want to create in this next part of your life because you deserve it, whatever that is. And as hard as it may seem to take those next right steps to create the world that you really, truly desire. Because I noticed when I did that most self-loving, self-caring things this week, all of a sudden, all this gelling started happening in a beautiful way in my new relationship with all of our kids. And it was like, it was amazing on how it just up leveled on a deep, deep level. And it was because I was doing the most self-loving and self-caring thing. And I was sitting in my truth and in re accepting the reality and feeling my feelings right then and there in the moment so I could move past and move through. And, and then that also teaches your children to do the same thing. Right. It te it te it not but one of the things that gets in the way is, is women's fear. You know, when we get scared, we can't express ourselves authentically. Because we go to our victim mode as opposed to a place of empowerment. Right. And so the, the way to flip your switch, you know, we were just talking about prayers. And it reminded me of, um, I'm working with a, a very cool client in California who's a cartoonist. And they've, you know, been a, a successful cartoonist because they're a good business person for like the last 30 years. And their prayer is they eat a mango, they think about eating a mango and sharing it with their daughter. So a prayer is anything that makes you happy. 
a great prayer for anything that you. makes you giggle. And totally makes you giggle. <laughs> that makes you feel good. And you don't actually have to do the thing to feel good. You can remember the thing to feel good or imagine the thing to feel good. So a prayer can be imagining eating really great potato chips. Right. Oh. You know? Uh, Alan Watts, who's a spiritual philosopher from the 60s, he was, you know, morally corrupt, I think, but, but he lived <laughs> in a houseboat and, you know, drank all the time, did whatever he did, but he had great spiritual insights. And he said, if you want to love, start by loving anything. Maybe it's chocolate. Maybe it's, you know, that you're going to eat lunch soon. Maybe, you know, it's the diamond on, on the wall. Who knows? But Love anything because that gets the flow going. Mm -hmm. That it turns the tap. Mm -hmm. yep. And then once the tap's turned on, just like a hole in a dam, it the water starts to spurt through and make the hole bigger and bigger until the force of nature, our desire to be in balance and equilibrium, it, we're always moving towards that. And that yep. desire is stronger than our desire to be screwed up. So right. we have to just allow our natural desire to be okay, to help move us along until we're okay. So that the message is really keep going inside, keep going inside and build that muscle to your internal knowing because that's your directional as where, you know, the more you talk to the outside and the less you go inside to find your answers, the more confused, and the more you'll be in your patterning, you right. really have to drop into your own heart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even my, <laughs> my six-year-old said this to me the other day, I, I died laughing. He said to me, he goes, mom, when we get home, can we watch this movie pitch perfect? And I go, no, honey, it's nine 30 at night. We're just going to go to bed. He goes, that's what my heart wants. And that's what you always tell me. <laughs> and I'm like, that is true. That is what your heart wants. And how about we do it tomorrow just at a better time, not past your bedtime? He's like, okay, because that's what my heart desires. And I'm like, great. <laughs> so you found a third level answer instead of, no, we're not doing that. You're going to go to bed. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, no, no, no. Instead, you said you honored what they wanted and you came up with a higher level solution because you're the adult. Right. Unfortunately, we have very few adults running around and we have a lot of children running around in this world. Yeah. And, and a lot of people just in their, in their suffering patterns, right? So many of us are letting go of the ways that we were in the world. You know, I have someone that I follow, her name is Deirdre Morgan and she um, does numerology and she sent out her newsletter recently that energetically where things are this month, it's either you're going to transition into being your best or you are going to bust. And she explained exactly why the energy is like that right now and in just where everything is. And I'm watching in my life, I'm getting tested to go to the bust by all means. And I'm watching clients do it. I, you know, I see about 15 clients a week and um, I'm watching the same thing happen. It's like, nope, just keep focusing on the best. Keep focusing what your heart wants. Keep focusing on, because if you just keep turning the needle there, eventually it keeps opening up and opening up and opening up. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be as simple as saying, you know what? I want to watch this movie because this is what my heart wants. Right. It could be a movie. It could be music. It could be, you know, every time I'm in the car with my kids and one of them is super cranky, I'm always like, what's your favorite song? What would you like to play on the radio? And they're like, why did they get it? And you hear all that. And I'm like, they, they don't realize the method of my madness is, okay, whoever's having the hardest time energetically at the moment, let's, let's just get them to that next place. Cause again, it's all energy and it's all vibration. Right. Everybody will raise up a high tide raises all boats, you know, yeah. so if you raise the energy in the car with the person who's suffering the most and you don't ignore them, but you support them, then everybody benefits and wins. Yep. And then everyone gets to a place of happiness and giggling and everything else. Like they know, <laughs> I'll put on some of my, when they're all, you know, a little pressed, you know, I'll put on, they're like, ah, oh, why this is, this is what actually gave me the idea because I was doing what makes me feel better. And then I started to realize going, oh, it's not about me. It's about them. And then I started playing the music that helps them up level. And, um, 
And it's interesting. I've even noticed, like, depending on what song that they pick, it also shows me how deep they are in their process. Right, right. right. It's and like what happened because you let go of the past. You let go of your judgments. Mm -hmm. You know, you started to take care of yourself. Right. So that you could see what they needed and come up with a higher level solution. Right. One that actually worked. Mm -hmm. And we do that with children. And we choose to do it with a few people in our lives. But most people, they really need to be on their own. You know, as adults, we need to allow them to learn how to how to manage their feelings rather than manipulate them to feel better. They need to find their own way to feel better. Yeah. Yeah. That's where, you know, as we, as we move into this next phase of where society is going, it's, it's really about reduce the distractions as much as you can, because that's not allowing you to let go of your past. It's really not, you know, the distractions of whether it's, you know, not, not sit, not that you should sit in your stuff. I don't, I don't necessarily think that you have to sit in your stuff, but it's about feeling the feelings so you can move forward. But if we're drinking, smoking, eating, you know, it's been fascinating that I've been doing this really deep work this week while the last couple of weeks I've been, you know, literally eating vegetables, berries, and, um, eggs, chicken, or, uh, tofu, you know, and, it, and I've been doing that for a couple of weeks now. Cause it's like, Oh, that's where mine comes out in my eating. And it's like, and I've been sitting there, you know, doing that. And it's like, wow. So now all my deep work has the opportunity to come up to actually clear and actually get to the next place. Yeah. Yeah. And you, can, and you can make that prayer that keeps you in a good spot by choosing really high quality food mm -hmm. and using that as a wonderful reward. Like, Oh yeah, I just got these great blueberries. <laughs> exactly. You know, and so when I need a pick me up, I'm going to go eat some of those great blueberries mm -hmm. because the taste and the smell and the color will naturally bring you up. So it's not about, once again, it's not about not eating or only eating certain things. It's about eating intentionally where you decide what you want to do. And if you're not sure, you wait until you figure it out. Right. You don't just follow, you know, your craving or your instinct because, you know, that might not be correct. Right. But because even the weight on our bodies is not letting go of the past. Yes. Because the weight on our bodies is your past. Yes. It's that layering of the past. Mm -hmm. Such fascinating stuff. Mm -hmm. And your body holds on to it when it thinks that you're going to need extra resources. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the whole point of cortisol and fight or flight, you know, is to tell your body you need to hold on to resources. And so many people have a hard time losing weight as long as they're still reacting to things because their body thinks that they're going to need it. But yep. as soon as you don't need it, as soon as you didn't need those rings, right? You no, know, for some reason, you could let things off of your system too. You right. don't need, you know, 10,000 calories. Myself that, I had convinced myself that they were going to, um, uh, they were going to be for each one of my kids. And, and then the more I thought about it, that was just my hook to it because they don't, they don't have any attachment to those whatsoever. Right. I'm like, what am I going to do with one diamond and two daughters? Nothing. <laughs> right. right. But if there are things that you want to ourselves, yeah. If there are things that we decide we want to keep, we just don't want the energetic load around it. You know, then we clear it. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Well, Rita, uh, I just want to tell everybody that's coming. I am going to be starting up on July 1st, another 21 day challenge and to help you get to a place of real wealth in your life, which is the abundance that we've been talking about today. So by all means, go to juliemurphy.com and give us your email address and you'll find out when that's all launching. Um, and uh, exciting good news. I've actually started writing my second book or third book. Sorry, my third one. I can't even believe it's my third one. Yeah. It's going to be uh, the spiritual laws of money. Oh, that's going to be really cool. <laughs> so and I'm putting it out to the universe right now. <laughs> then that's how it starts. You know, yep, it starts with exactly. the thought and the, dream and the emotion. And uh, Rita, how does everybody get a hold of you? If they want to find me, they can go to RitaHickmanCoaching.com 
or they can look for me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I'll do a free coaching call with someone to find out where they're at and to give them some tips and help them get clarity and we'll dive deep into it. And, uh, and then if it's a good fit, we'll do coaching with them. So everything's mm -hmm. kind of um, tailored because every person's so individual. Right. And so if, if you're having trouble getting through an emotional time, you know, whether it's because um, you're getting divorced or a parent passed or your child's having a hard time with ADD or ADHD, because we almost always have multiple of these things going right. on in our lives. That's true. So if you want help with these different areas, then we'll sit down, we'll do a seven week, you know, jumpstart thing to give people the tools and, and get the momentum going. And because uh, my, my job is to help bring people into the light. You know, so if I can help bring someone into the light, then they're going to be more successful. They're going to grow. And then all, you know, high tide raises all boats. This Absolutely. is about changing the world, which is why you're doing your 21 day challenges. Yep, exactly. It's all about up leveling all of us because we are all connected and we are all one. Oh yeah. The more people who are screwed up, the more we are screwed up. And so it's in our best interest to let people learn their lessons as fast as possible, get out of their way, love them anyways, hate the sin, love the sinner. And let's, you know, let's raise everybody up. Beautiful stuff. Well, thank you for another week, my friend. I enjoy our time together and we'll see you guys all next week. Bye. Bye.